Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free a certification training course on the human component of professionalism. And uh, just like uh, one of the previous modules that we had dealing with communication, these professionalism skills deal with human type features, human type skills that you need to know. These are new objectives that were added to the CompTIA certification dealing specifically in a category of communication and professionalism. An entire category of the exam is based on this. So you're going to get quite a few questions on the exam, certainly more than one or two dealing with communication and professionalism. And what we're going to talk about are certification topics that deal with professional behavior, privacy, confidentiality, re confidentiality, respect for customer property, things like that when you're working in an environment, especially one dealing in technology, this idea of professionalism becomes extremely important. Let's go through what some of those professionalism skills might be. One of them, and this is probably one of the most important you're going to run into in your career, is to maintain a positive attitude when you're working with these types of environments. Now, this is not always the easiest thing to do, especially when the problem is very difficult, when the problem is one that is very important for you to resolve. Oftentimes, having a positive attitude is a bit of a challenge. But one of the things you can do is have a positive tone of voice. If, if the biggest problem you have is if this computer is broken, well, that's pretty good. You'll have a, a happy-go-lucky attitude about resolving the issue. Don't worry. We're going to resolve the problem. We'll figure out what to do and have that positive tone of voice when dealing with not only the people around you, but the customers, especially those people who are really going through a trying time, very frustrating when they're having problems. Make sure you also partner with them. Let them know, I'm working on this. This is a problem I know that you're, you're struggling with. I'm going to do everything I can to resolve the issue. Now, sometimes you're going to run into is situations where the problem can't be resolved. That becomes a little bit more of a challenge. Well, your hard drive, we've done some tests on it. We did everything we could. The hard drive has crashed. There's no recovering from this particular problem. I can't fix it. We did our best. We did everything we possibly could. We run the, ran the best diagnostics on there. And one of the things I did, if the data on there is so important, let me give you some helpful options. There are third parties we could send this hard drive to that could recover this data if you didn't have a backup. So even if you aren't able to resolve the issue, make sure you have some of those options there. Partner with your customers so they know you're part of solving this problem too. Your attitude is really going to have a direct impact on the experience that your customer is going to have. And remember, this customer you have, whether it's an internal customer at a large company or a large organization, or whether it's somebody coming into a place of business that's having you solve a problem for them, they're going to have more problems. They're going to need to come back to you, or they're going to need to go somewhere to resolve the issues. And if you're someone who's partnered with them, you had a good attitude about resolving the issue, and in the end, maybe you solved the problem, maybe you didn't, but they're going to remember that. And that will have a very important impact on where they go next time. One of the problems that we often get into with these high pressure environments and there's a lot of stress and the problems are occurring is we often get in these situations where we begin arguing with each other. And these are problems we want to avoid. And when you run into these stressful technical issues, sometimes the the tempers they flare. They the tempers run high. Just don't be defensive. One of the things you have to understand is that people are going to be very tense and very frustrated at these times. Don't feed into it. Don't feel like they're coming at you. Most of the time, people are frustrated at the situation. It's not a personal thing. And you shouldn't feel defensive. They're, they came to you because they think you can help. And in those situations, that's the way you should approach it. Don't contradict what someone is saying. If somebody says, I'm having a problem with this, and here's what I think it is, and one of the things you want to do is say, that's good advice. I'll take that under advisement. Perhaps that is the problem. We'll make sure we consider that. Don't start arguing with someone or contradicting because that can certainly raise that level of frustration even higher. Oftentimes, this idea of listening and responding to what somebody's saying often diffuses these difficult situations. Many times on the phone and in person, someone has shown up, they've gone through seven people, they've not been able to resolve the problem, and they are frustrated. And they end up taking their initial frustrations out on you. But if you sit there and listen and say, I hear what you're saying, 
I think that your problem is a really big issue for you. I understand exactly why you're so frustrated with trying to get this resolved. And they start to understand that you're there to help them. This is about building relationships with people. That's the thing that you should focus on is put yourself in their shoes and try to understand more about the problems that they are having. Uh, when you start to deal with these issues where the tense situations are in place, make sure you communicate with them. Oftentimes there is a, a, a delay. You have to send off for parts. You have to make sure that something will run for 24 hours to be sure that it's working. And in those situations, there's really nothing happening. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be communicating with your customer. Give them a call. Let them know, hey, just checking in with you. Wanted to let you know I checked on the, uh, the order that we made, we're still expecting to receive those parts tomorrow. If that changes, I'll make sure I contact you. Oftentimes, it's just communication that makes all of this work so much better. Even when the problems can't be resolved, even when something goes horribly wrong because you're communicating with that end user, they're now more informed and feel more comfortable with the entire situation. When we start having problems technically and issues that are very problematic, especially ones that deal with very important pieces of data and problems that are oftentimes unfixable, like hard drive failures or systems that completely break. People's jobs are on the line. There's sometimes dollars on the line. When certain pieces of information have to be transmitted to a customer, somebody has been working on a project for a month and suddenly they can't access the files they need. Don't minimize those problems. Those are extremely important problems for someone else. Else. And even though for you, you're just undeleting files or you're just recovering from a backup, it's something much more important for the people who own that system. So you want to be sure that those problems they're having and the situation they're in, that you also feel that and you understand exactly the situation that they're in. These small problems can be extremely huge. So you coming into a situation where the laptop's broken, all you need to do is replace the keyboard on the laptop. Seems simple for you. You're just walking in the door and replacing that. But that laptop, incredibly important for that end user, that's a really, really big issue. And even though it seems like just replacing a keyboard, these are very big problems that have to get resolved very quickly. Oftentimes, people be on the phone, where are you? Why aren't you here replacing this keyboard? Perhaps you don't have a complete understanding of the problem. You need to make sure you realize some of these issues can be very, very important for the end user and for the customer to get them resolved. Oftentimes you become part technical and part counselor. You're oftentimes dealing with situations where people are having a problem that they need to get resolved that really isn't completely technical. Remember, computers really don't have problems. It's the people that have problems having to deal with these issues that they're going through of resolving the, the issue that they're having, trying to get those files so that they can finish this project, trying to recover a document they've been working months on, trying to recover a book that they have been writing. That's the problem. And oftentimes it comes back to that human component of dealing with these particular issues they're having and understanding that just by resolving this keyboard problem, you're going to make everything so much better for their, them and what they're doing. Such a simple thing sometimes can solve so many other problems. What you want to do is also avoid being judgmental. There's no reason to insult somebody. Many times I'll be in a computer store and I'll just be browsing around. Someone will come in with a system. They'll lay up on the counter and go, I'm having problems. I got spyware. I need you to help me rid it, uh, get rid of it. And they say, sure, we'll do that. And they take in the back room and they say something that is, is insulting about the user getting spyware. Oh, they're too stupid to even know what they were doing and that's why they got the spyware. The insults should really be left on the playground. You in this case should be better than that. You should be the teacher. You should be the one saying, I'm sorry you had this problem with your spyware. Uh, if you'd like to, when we clear this up and you come back, I can step you through some issues that will help you resolve this in the future. And that's the way we all learn about these things. All of us had to start somewhere with these pieces. And by imparting that knowledge that you have about resolving these problems, you're not only helping this for the next time when it happens, but you're also creating that relationship with your customers and you're making them smarter about what they're doing. And everybody likes it when that happens. And ultimately, you can make as many insults as you'd like, but you're going to make some really big mistakes.
And you're going to need to remember that situation. It humbles you and makes you appreciate more about these frustrating situations people come into. I was at a remote location. We were doing a router upgrade over the wire. That means we were upgrading the firmware of this system. And right in the middle of it, I felt compelled to adjust the, the system so that it would fit better in the rack. And I accidentally pulled the power out of the back of it. If you've ever done a firmware upgrade before, one of the things that always says on the screen is don't power this off right in the middle. Because what happened is I turned that router into a brick. It became worthless to us because we weren't able to reboot it and start the process over again. We'd already deleted all the firmware because we were reloading it. And so that was a big problem. We had to reorder, wait two more days on site for that to arrive. And I remembered that. I remembered some very important things about very big mistakes. And you're going to make some. Just remember that when they happen and remember that that's the situation you want to be sure you avoid in the future because there may be somebody whose job is on the line at that situation too. And you want to be sure that you're not judgmental about those issues because it's going to happen to you too. When you're dealing with these types of problems, be sure that you avoid any type of distractions and interruptions. When you're talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody about a problem they're having and the phone rings, have somebody else take it. Have the phone go to voicemail. Hit the button and make it go to voicemail. The most important thing at that moment is the person standing in front of you. Make sure you're not interrupted in that situation. If there are delays, maybe somebody comes in with a delivery you have to sign for. Maybe at that point your boss walks in and says, I need important information right now regarding this project. Make sure you apologize. Say, oh, I'm sorry about this. It won't be but a moment. That's the human part, letting the other person know that they're important and the problem they have is something that you will address and be sure that's taken care of. And make sure that that apology it is so important to let them know that that's happening. And it's so easy to do. They're the most important thing you should be worrying about. And if something happens that just was unintended, make sure you redirect the focus. The environment you want to create is one of conversation. This is something I found oftentimes when working in corporate environments is everybody's in a cube and it's in a very sterile type environment. It may be a situation where people have to come into a particular area, a particular room. Maybe it's a, I, I've seen this in, in environments where it's a doorway where the bottom half of the doorway stays closed and people have to come up into the window and ask to have their problems resolved. That's not very personable. You're actually creating a gap now between you and the other person. So you have to make it inviting. And I found one of the most magical things in the world is candy. You put a candy bowl right there on top of that half window where that door is and that half door. People come by just to get a piece of candy. You can wave, hey, how you doing? Yeah, enjoy the candy. Have a nice day. And then they're going to come by with a problem. They'll grab the Jolly Rancher. They'll pop it in their mouth. They'll tell you about the problem they're having. It's just more comfortable, more personable. When you're on the phone, it's a little bit different. You can't really give somebody a piece of candy over the phone. So make sure the environment that you create on the telephone is also inviting. It's very quiet in the background, that you're able to talk very clearly with the audio. Make sure that if it, you're on a mobile phone, you ask them, are you able to hear me okay? Should I, should I call you back from a different telephone? Are there any issues? We're on an international call. Are you getting any echo? Is this an okay call for you? Should I find another way to communicate with you? That's very important because at that point, that's all you have is the voice communication from one person to another. And so making sure it's very clear makes it as easy and a nice an environment as possible to communicate the problems that people are having and so that you can understand what's going on. We are often times in these technical environments put into situations where we are in charge of some very important and oftentimes very confidential data. And it's just because we're in, in charge of the computer systems on where they reside that happens to put us in this particular position. So there are some privacy concerns you should be aware of. You are, in many cases, able to access very sensitive information, but not only information that at a professional level in your organization, oftentimes you'll find that you're, you're got personal information that you have access to. Maybe somebody did their taxes 
on their computer system that they're bringing in to get repaired. Well, when all their tax information is on the hard drive, you're the person who has to maintain the confidentiality of that. Those are for that person only. And you want to be sure that you maintain a, a level of sensitivity associated with that information. You also have professional responsibilities. When you're working in an environment with healthcare or with insurance, there is an amazing amount of very personal and private healthcare information you have access to. You want to be sure that when you're in those environments where you have access to that data, that you handle it in the most professional way possible. And in the end, you want to treat people the way that you'd want to be treated. It almost comes down to environments uh, that are healthcare related, you don't know the people uh, that, that are on that particular hard drive with all of that healthcare information, but you know how you would want your information to be treated. And that's exactly how you should treat that data. Oftentimes, this, this information that is on these hard drives of your company and your systems that you have, they are incredibly valuable and incredibly important pieces of data, and you should treat them as this very, very important asset and maintain that confidentiality. Because very often in these technical environments, we're going back and forth into people's cubes. Sometimes we're going into people's home offices to do things. We want to be sure that we're aware of other people's property and we provide that property property with the right amount of respect. In a corporate environment, oftentimes people have printers on their desk. They have a laptop computer or a desktop computer. And even though those systems are owned by the company, because they are the systems those people use every day, they think of it as their system. It's very private, personal type of property. You want to be sure you don't abuse those types of things. If you're sitting at some somebody's corporate desk. You don't just want to use their telephone like it's yours. This is their systems. And very often, I often ask permission. Oh, I noticed that uh, you have this particular laptop. Would it be okay if we go in and see if we can try to find this particular problem you're having? And that also lets them know that you respect the property that they have. In a home office, it becomes even more important because you're in somebody's home. And that also is another level of privacy that you want to be sure you're respectful of. In an office workplace and a home workspace, there's oftentimes personal property there as well. People have, have pictures on their desk. They have things their, their children have drawn. They've got it on their wall. And you want to be respectful of those things. Don't move things around. If some, somebody has it on top of their monitor, you oftentimes want to ask, is it OK if we remove these? We need to replace the monitor. Where could I put these so they're taken care of? Have great respect for the people's personal property as well. Let's review some of these professionalism skills then. Make sure you maintain that positive attitude. Make sure you get into the minds of your customers and let them know that it's just as important to you to resolve this problem as it is for them. If this is a tense situation, be the person who does not argue. Make sure that you're a little bit higher level than that and that you don't come down to this frustrating level that your end user is having. You want to be the person that helps them through this situation. So don't minimize the problems that they're having. Make sure that it's just as important to you to resolve that issue and that you're not judgmental about the problems that they're having or the way that the problem happened to manifest itself. Maybe it was something the end user did that had the problem uh, happened in the first place, there's no reason for you to be judgmental about what they are doing. And make sure that also you've gotten rid of any distractions, especially in the process where you're dealing with customers. This is a one-on-one -on -one situation. You want to be sure that they're the most important thing that you're dealing with at that time, and they understand that you're taking care of them. When you're in the situation where you're dealing with very confidential data, you want to treat that with great respect and make sure that you maintain that level of confidentiality. And finally, respect other people's property, whether it's the phone on their desk, whether it's something personal like like pictures that's in their cube or even in their home office, make sure you have respect for what types of systems they have, the types of personal property they have, and that you would treat it with the same respect that you would want your items to be treated with. Well, that concludes this module on professionalism. For more videos, more information on this A-plus certification, we've got message boards and study guides out at our website at freeaplus.com. <laughs>